Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please join me in welcoming to the India Today Conclave the two-time Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Bhutan, Dasho Shering Topge. Please give him a very warm round of applause. I had the pleasure of uh, meeting the Honorable Prime Minister uh, in Bhutan a couple of years ago, and uh, there were two things that struck me. And this was my first visit to Bhutan, and uh, it is not one of, just one of the most beautiful countries, for those of you all who have been there will agree with me, but it's also among the most progressive. It is the first country to introduce the concept of gross national happiness rather than GDP as a measure of economic growth. The second is uh, that the erudite Mr. Topge is a truly impressive politician with innovative ideas, a committed environmentalist, uh, a cultural advocate, and a yoga enthusiast inspired, I'm told, he tells me that by Mrs. Tog uh, Togbe herself. She is here as uh, there, Mrs. Togbe. Welcome to the India Today Conclave. In his second term that has just begun, Mr. Topge has promised to tackle the unprecedented economic challenges that his country faces, including high unemployment uh, and, um, uh, you know, a, a focus to evolve what he calls, or probably would be, the gross national happiness 2.0. Mr. Topge is currently on a mission uh, uh, to boost further ties, to boost uh, ties further. Uh, between India and Bhutan, and I wish him all the best on that. Mr. Topge, may I now invite you to deliver your address. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Topge. Thank you for that lovely introduction, Raj. Delighted to be back in Delhi. Delighted to be in India. Delighted to meet old friends and make new friends. Such a warm reception. Your hospitality, your warmth, your friendship is enduring. I had the opportunity of meeting Prime Minister Modi and the government, president, captains of industry, all within the span of two days, and here I am today. I did something silly yesterday. At 10 p.m., I had a tooth implant. I extracted a tooth. <laughs> and at 10 p.m., they were... Dr. Mehta, with very gentle hands, inserted an implant in my lower jaw. I say silly because I knew I was going to meet you. It didn't even occur to me that I may not be able to talk. And if I did, forget about you understanding me, I wouldn't be able to understand myself. So you'll have to forgive me. I'm going to do something else. Silly. Now, I'm going to request you to indulge in me and close your eyes. If you close your eyes, and imagine, if you will, that you are a king. You're an absolute monarch. You love your people. But what's more, your people love you. You are developing your country. You need to take care of your people, their health. You need to take care of the elderly in society. Will you give them free health care? How will you define your health care? You want to take care of your children. What type of education system will you build and will it be free? You want to honor your ancestors. And keep your traditions and culture alive. You want to keep your brand, your unique culture for your future generations, and you also want to keep your environment for your future generations. Would you as king do all that? What type of economy would you build for your country? 
Would it be driven mercilessly by market forces or would it be sustainable and would you divide the proceeds of your economy through all the people? As king, you will need a government. You could rule as a philosopher king or a benevolent dictator, but would you instead choose to introduce democracy for your people? You are king. This is your country. What would you do? Some of you still have your eyes closed. You can open them. Thank you for indulging in me. This is the story of Bhutan. If you said yes to most of what I asked, you believe in gross national happiness and you believe in the ideals and principles introduced by our kings. Their overarching emphasis has been the well-being and happiness of their people. By balancing economic growth, which is a necessity with social progress, cultural preservation, environmental protection, and good governance. Our kings have come a long way. Bhutan have come a long way. We have come a long way. This journey has been, by and large, successful. And I dare say it has been successful because of the friendship, goodwill, and unconditional support of the government and people of India. We are deeply grateful for your generosity, for your friendship, for your support. While gross national happiness has been successful, everything is not hunkadori. We face our challenges. While we choose, while we strive to balance our economy with a sustainable environment, our economy is weak, it is shallow, and it has taken a battering because of COVID. I turn to you for support. You can support by visiting Bhutan. As tourists, as guests, as friends. If you visit now, it's springtime. You'll see flowers blossoming everywhere. The air will be clean, clear. If you can't come now, come in the summer. When it's hot here and humid here, in Bhutan, it is cool, moist, lush. If you can't make it in the fall, please come. If you can't make it in the summer, please come in the fall. When it's a riot of colors, autumn colors like what I'm wearing now. Or come in the winter, where the skies are blue, glorious sunshine, every day, everywhere. But do come. Make time. Don't just leave it in your bucket list. Take it out and visit us. With your help, with your support, with your friendship, I know GNH, Gross National Happiness, will not just succeed, but will inspire countless millions in many other countries to aspire to build better societies. But we must now think of the next level of GNH, GNH 2.0. What is gross national happiness for the 21st century? Many societies are designing cities. From Saudi Arabia to Indonesia to Egypt, they're building cities. Iraq to Honduras, and even California are imagining cities. Now close your eyes again. If you had the power, what type of city would you build? What type of city can you imagine? What if you had a canvas to build a city? And what if that canvas was 2,000 square kilometers? 2,000 square kilometers is 30% larger than 
the Union Territory of Delhi. It is 50 times bigger than New Delhi, three times bigger than Mumbai, three times bigger than Singapore. What if you had 2,000 square kilometers as your canvas? And what if that canvas, now close your eyes, what if that canvas was not desert, was not flat, was not featureless, but what if in that canvas you had a river meandering down one border, the river called Mana, steaming with fish, and among them the endangered golden marcia. And on the other side of that canvas you have the Sunkosh River, capable, ready to generate more than 4,000 megawatts of clean energy. And what if near these rivers, two mighty rivers, are two old, ancient, protected areas? Biodiversity hotspots, teeming with wildlife and birds and fungi and flowers. And what if these two protected areas are connected by a biological corridor so that elephants and tigers and deer, leopard, birds can roam freely? What if in the center, between the two national parks, the protected areas are undulating land with water features and paddy fields, small hamlets. What if to the north are the foothills of the mighty Himalayas and to the south the generous open plains of great India? How would you imagine a city there? How would you bring in the ideals and principles of gross national happiness and how would you build a city, a city that is built on gross national happiness for the 21st century, GNH 2.0? Visualize. Visualize hard. Would your city be driven? Would your city be taken over and be driven by market forces? Or would you design a city aimed at enhancing the well-being and happiness of its residents. Would your city have skyscrapers like any other city, or would it be low-rises? Would it be built on stone, on timber, on mud? Would it be built sustainably? Would it integrate gradually into our forests? Would your roads and transport be sustainable? Would you continue to take care of the biodiversity, hotspots, the two national parks? Not just take care, but would you guarantee it for the next generation? Would your entire city not just be carbon negative, not just be sustainable, but be carbon neutral? And in fact, be carbon negative, being the first carbon negative city in the world. This city, envisioned, imagined by His Majesty the King, is called the Gelifu Mindfulness City. A city that will enable people to live in harmony with people. That will enable people to live in harmony with nature. That will allow innovation and knowledge to blossom in harmony with sustainability and spirituality. This is the Gelifu Mindfulness City. A city for a new era, not just a model for new urban living. Not just an experiment in urban design, but a journey. A journey of gross national happiness to the next level, to GNH 2.0 for the 21st century. A gift to Bhutan, a gift to our future, but a gift to India and a gift to the world. In a while, my friend, Bjark Engels is going to take the stage and he will describe how he is going to translate His Majesty's vision into reality 
Keep your eyes wide open during his presentation. Listen to him carefully. With open minds, open hearts. And then visit me. Visit Bhutan. Visit Gelifu, the mindfulness city, and join our journey into the next century and beyond. Thank you very much.